Hi, my name is Colton and I work with customers at Directus. Today, I'm going to tell you about what's new in version 10.4 and do stick with me because after some exciting new stuff, there's some small but important breaking changes to take note of. A sneak peek of our new SDK. Our JavaScript SDK is the recommended way to work with Directus and we've been building a brand new one from the ground up and today releasing it in beta. Our new SDK is written in TypeScript and provides full proper type safety, something many of you have been asking for. We've also split up the SDK into various functions you can import separately. By composing a custom client with just the bits you need, you can decrease your overall build size by tree shaking the ones you don't use. Finally, this new SDK will support Directus real-time, taking away a lot of the work needed to send and receive real-time data in your applications. New and improved documentation. We've been putting a lot of energy into our docs to make learning Directus both easier and more comprehensive. You can find a whole host of guides on using Directus features like live preview in real time, guides on building projects with your favorite frameworks such as Next.js or Nuxt, and improved guides for self-hosting Directus. If you build a project with Directus and need to hand it off, we've moved a bunch of our docs to a new zone called user guides. These are less developer focused and should mean both you and your end users can find what they need. There's a lot more to come, especially around extensions, but this represents a great milestone in our journey and we hope you learn lots. We have the best community. We want to also thank our community for their contributions towards this release. Thanks to Phil for fixing a bug on our table component, which allowed multiple radio buttons to be selected when it should only have allowed one. Thanks to Ashish for fixing a bug which would sometimes show incorrect data based on an archive filter. Thanks to Phil for improving how we fetch permissions and settings to avoid an infinite loop. And thanks to the team at Get Start for their contributions towards improving our filter support. Finally, some small breaking changes that may require your attention. We always try and keep changes that require action to a minimum, but there are a handful of this release that should only need a few lines of code to adapt for. Moving extensions to our new error handling package. This change is due to improvements to how we handle errors, especially in hook and endpoint extensions. We only exposed a small number of error types to extension builders, and if you threw any other errors, they would be wrapped in unhelpful generic internal server error to the end user. We have moved all of our exception handling to our new Directus errors package, meaning you can throw more standardized errors that we will surface appropriately and namespace to your extension. This means you'll need to potentially update your error handling to use our library. We have dropped memcached support. Directus 10.4 drops support for memcached as a shared cache. You'll need to move over to Redis, which is generally better suited for this purpose. A change to Redis environment variables. We are consolidating and simplifying environment variables for Redis. So if you use it, you'll have to update the names of some variables and hopefully be able to remove commonly duplicated ones. Directus 10.4 is now available on NPM and Docker Hub and will be available in Directus Cloud next week. Thanks for joining me and see you in the next release.